Now to today at the pump, where the average price for regular, unleaded, self-serve gas rose to about $2.93 a gallon this morning. That's according to AAA. We'll get to your questions for the head of Chevron, David O'Reilly, in just a couple of minutes. But first, have you ever wondered how the gas you pump into your car makes it from the oil fields, miles underground, all the way to your local gas station? We sent NBC's Don Teague to find out. In Marietta, Georgia, Randy McDowell is about to buy some gas. It's just too hot. It hurt my pocket. He doesn't know or care where it came from, but we were curious, so we took a trip. I'll show you the ropes. It's to Chevron's Houston headquarters, where 250 scientists spend their days looking for oil. If you drill just willy-nilly, odds are you're not going to find anything. Chevron made $14 billion in profit last year. They find plenty of oil. But where? Under the sea. Much of it is offshore. Under the sea. Miles Darling, beneath the ocean floor. Where it's winter, take it from me. There are billions of barrels of oil out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Most of it hasn't even been discovered yet. And if you want to get all of that oil out of the ground, there's really only one way to do it. You have to drill. Which isn't easy. To tap this reserve off the Louisiana coast, Chevron built the largest freestanding structure in the world. The Petronius oil rig is more than 2,000 feet tall, anchored to the ocean floor. It sits on 200 million barrels of oil, which Chevron is pumping at a rate of 52,000 barrels a day. We have day crews and night crews. Uh, the rig's operating 24 hours a day, so it's, it's an all-day, 365 days a year operation. Because the value of underground oil is basically nothing. But once pumped to the rig, it's worth $70 a barrel. This is unrefined crude. This is what we, they will get at the refinery. How does it get there? Let's go get lost, let's go get lost. The crude oil from Petronius is delivered from the platform into a pipeline, where it takes two days to travel 93 miles under the ocean to a Louisiana storage terminal. We have the ability to store it here at the terminal, and we can deliver it out on the refinery's demand. Through more pipelines to places like Chevron's Tascagoula refinery, 80 miles away, where a 42-gallon barrel of crude oil becomes 20 gallons of gasoline. The finished gas goes back into underground pipelines and heads north throughout the country. After its journey through the pipeline, the gasoline is stored in terminals like this one here in Atlanta. Those giant tanks can hold about 10 million gallons of gasoline, but it won't be here long. My heart is blue for you. Because scores of trucks pick up and deliver the gas to stations across Atlanta. The station owners add taxes and about a dime a gallon in profit and say gasoline is still a bargain. You know, you feed a cow some grass or hay and uh, it produces a gallon of milk and you pay three dollars and something a gallon for it and yet you spend billions of dollars just to get a gallon of gasoline in this service station. And finally, after all of that, the gas goes from the pump into the car. The price for that here in Marietta, Georgia, two eighty nine a gallon today. The breakdown, $1.67 per gallon for crude oil, $0.44 cents for taxes, $0.78 cents for refining, transportation, and profit. A few pumps away, Randy McDowell got less than three and a half gallons for his 10 bucks. He's not happy, but knows he'll be back tomorrow. For today, Don Teague, NBC News, Marietta, Georgia. David O'Reilly is chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Chevron Corporation, which has a network of 12,000 gas stations worldwide between Chevron, Texaco, and Caltex. A few weeks ago, Chevron posted a $4 billion profit for the first quarter of 2006. That is a 49% increase from a year ago. And Mr. O'Reilly, by the way, is the second oil company chief kind enough to come in and answer your questions and ours about those rising gas prices. Mr. O'Reilly, nice to have you here. Thank you, Matt. Nice to be here. Gas prices over the last year up about 77 cents a gallon, up about 50 cents a gallon from just two months ago. Let me ask you, because I know you have forecasters working on this sort of thing, what price do you think Americans are going to be paying by the end of this summer per gallon? I would expect that gas prices will stabilize at this level. We've gone through a transition period to uh, summer gasoline. We've had to get MTB out of gasoline and put ethanol in. All of that uh, has behind us now. Uh, there's one caveat. No more hurricanes this year. The last year, the hurricanes really hit us very badly. 
and disrupted supply, and in the absence of hurricanes, I would expect gasoline prices to stabilize and moderate. In, in this country, we hear $3 a gallon, and we just go crazy. We say this a lot. You look at Europe, where, albeit because of a lot of increased taxes, they're paying the equivalent of about $6 a gallon. With all this increased competition in terms of consumption from countries like China and India, in simple terms, Mr. O'Reilly, is the party over for Americans? Are we going to have to mentally prepare ourselves to pay those kinds of prices? Well, I'm not sure we'll be paying six dollars because, as you pointed out, a lot of that is taxes, and our tax rates, even though they're significant, are quite a bit lower here than they are in Europe. Uh, I, I think the days of really low gas prices are over. We've gone through a period of about 20 or 25 years where supply has outstripped demand. Because of the economic growth of the world that you've described, we're seeing growth in demand around the world, and I think, as a result, we're going to see firmer gasoline prices in the future. Here's a viewer question. Andy in Cameron Park, California writes, Mr. O'Reilly, people see a huge increase in the price of gas now, a 49% increase in Chevron's profits in the first quarter of 2006, and they can't help but think price gouging. What percentage of your profits come directly from the pump? Is there another source of profit? Well, the direct profit from the pump is four to five cents per gallon for our company. The other source of pro uh, at the so pump. of the four billion dollars you repeat you report in profits, what percentage of that comes from gas sales in the United States? It, the gas sales in the United States at the pump is about uh, fifteen percent. You hear people talk about corporate responsibility at times of need. You've got 12,000 service stations around the country. What if, hypothetical situation, you got all of your service stations together and you said, guys, and we're going to advertise this to the American public, we're going to lower price per gallon by about five cents during the summer months. Don't you think you would create such brand loyalty and customer loyalty that the reward of that would, would outweigh any risk of that in terms of profit to your shareholders? Well, we have, we have customer loyalty today. The problem with lowering the price is that it increases demand and it, it goes counter to the way the market works. So we have to find ways of building customer loyalty through having our service stations open and clean, having our service stations available, pumping good quality gas, excellent quality gas, and meeting the other needs that we can, of the variety of needs our customers have. But the problem with lowering your price relative to competition is you run out of gas. We, we and talk, we can't afford to run out of gas. And we talked to Rex Tillerson, the CEO of ExxonMobil here not long ago, and he said, look, we're in the business to make money. So this is, right, quite frankly, all about capitalism, and, and no one lines up to hand you guys a check when your profits are down. They only criticize right. you when profits are up. Is that the way you see it? Well, we have, well I, you know, I can understand why people would criticize us when prices are high, because they're unexpectedly high relative to this period of time we've had, we've had low prices. So I can understand the frustration there. But if you put it in the great scheme of things, the profits that we earn relative to the big capital investments we have, you know, we're investing almost $15 billion this year to bring more oil and gas to the American people. What about alternative sources of energy? How much are you investing in that area? Quite a bit. In fact, we're the largest renewables producer of any of the major oil companies, primarily in the area of geothermal. We're selling ethanol in 40% of the gasoline we provide today. We just invested in a biodiesel plant in Houston, which will come up. But these are not going to solve the total problem. They are helpful but they're not going to solve the total problem. We're still going to need petroleum products. Note, note to our control room, I'm skipping ahead on, an, on a viewer email here. I want to go to one from Jerry from Folsom, California, who writes as a two-part question. I think it's a really good question. How is it that as soon as there is an announced increase in the price of crude oil, the next day prices at the pump take a jump? We all know the fuel in the station's tank was purchased at a lower cost. Isn't that a situation of gouging? Well, it goes both ways. I mean, the, we have a crude oil market, which generally influences the price of gasoline worldwide, because crude, as your show pointed out, is a significant part of the cost of gasoline. However, there's also local gasoline markets, and they go up because of local supply and demand. For example, taxes in one state vary from another. Sixty cents a gallon in New York, thirty cents but over in New Jersey. But it does seem to the impartial observer that prices go up faster at the pump when we hear about crude oil prices increasing than the other way. When we hear about a decrease in crude oil, it doesn't seem as if prices at the pump go down as quickly. It, it seems that way because people are very conscious of these prices. But I, just as recently as, as February when crude prices went up, gasoline prices actually went down. So it goes both ways. Real quickly, what's the biggest misconception about your industry? Well, I think the biggest misconception is the complexity that it takes to deliver that barrel of gasoline or that gallon of gasoline to the pump. And, and the other point I think I'd like to make is that we are growing more and more dependent on imported oil. 
you saw the easy stuff that's coming from the Gulf of Mexico, but two-thirds of our oil comes from much further afield, much more difficult places. We've got to get it here, do all those same things in very complex environment. That's an issue that I think the American people ought to focus on. They ought to push on our legislators to allow us to explore for more gasoline here in the United States. David O'Reilly of Chevron, again, our thanks for you for uh, accepting our invitation to be here today. You're welcome. Delighted to be here. Thank Appreciate you. It.